cats, it's Ed, bad back bud here. Today I have a video documenting for you a few of my favorite things. All weather jackets and mud on your midsoles. High vis mesh uppers and waterproof mittens. Brown cardboard boxes containing new shoes. Here's some of my favorite stuff. Thanks for joining me on the channel once again, people. Subscribe and hit the notification button. Also help the channel out by giving this video a thumbs up, like, and sharing it with your running buddies. Thank you, sure. Today I have some of my favorite running stuff for you. Those things that I use on an everyday basis. Quite a lot of you follow me on Strava. If you haven't yet, go and do that. I'm really particular about what I use when I'm out there running, and I'm gonna document some of that for you today. You want things that are gonna make your escapades in the great outdoors enjoyable, like effective, and also things that sort of present good quality. Performance and value are important as well. Here's some of the stuff that I've enjoyed testing out over the last year. So first up, in the colder and wetter days, there are some items that just really help you to get out there in the first place. They're gonna keep you warm and protected. If it's washed and ready, the soil all-weather 3.0 jacket is my ultimate choice. I've tried and failed using loads of different other running jackets. They've all been a total failure, really. Trying to find something that's comfortable in wet and windy conditions. Every other thing I've tried has just been like a bin bag, really, over the top of your body. Zero breathability and useless fit. The Leica Glove all-weather jacket 3.0 from Saw, absolutely successful at avoiding all of those things. Superb, nice and fitting and very sort of comfortable, especially for for someone's quite tall it comes complete with a couple of waterproof pockets one on the front side and one on the back easily enough room in the pocket on the back of this jacket to hold your phone i find it really good to put in a couple of gels you can store another one up front as well if you're going on a longer run the storm fabric has a double application of a repellent finish i think they coat the yarn that makes up the fabric and then they actually treat the fabric itself so it's kind of two applications of that water repellent stuff really does work a treat as well this one's fantastic in the cold weather also in the wet and windy stuff too i love the inclusion of the thumb holes as well the end of the sleeves just helps to cover up the hands and keep them a little warmer the zips are also of good quality and that's another bugbear i have with some running gear the zips are okay for a few times but after a few months they just wear out and break these are absolutely fantastic there are some reflective features here and it's one item you can wear without base layers if you need to without the fear of getting cold now it may Maybe an expensive item this one from Saw, but if you're gonna buy a load of other jackets only to realize they're just fit for nothing really, then you may as well just get this one outright. If you're running every day, especially if you wanna get out there during the winter, this is a great option. Now, we all know that recent watch updates have improved the optical heart rate capabilities. They're just a bit more accurate now and a little bit more reliable. The Garmin Epix 2 and the Forerunner 955 are both watches that I've been testing testing out recently. They have vastly improved heart rate monitoring statistics. That's obviously gonna make the info gathered a little bit more usable, I suppose, and you can put a little bit more trust into some of the metrics that they spit out at you. Recovery times are that bit more effective now because you've got better heart rate monitoring. You can see whether you've hit those desired effort levels within your runs with a little bit more accuracy. But of course, it's good to have a backup if these things don't work out. Sometimes people's wrists just don't work with optical heart rate measurement. As such, I still pull out the trusty old Polar OH1 Plus. It's still the heart rate monitor of choice for me. You can wear this one on your upper arm and ensure you get a reasonable reading, especially if you're perhaps running in some very wet weather. The original strap that I have with my OH1 Plus did expire some time back. It just fell to bits. Fortunately, though, the strap you can buy for the Verity Sense, which is the new model of the OH1 Plus, works absolutely fine with the original. The tracking is almost always spot on and it lasts a reasonable amount of time on a full charge. Though I hear the newer model perhaps does get a little bit of a boost in terms of the actual duration. I don't think there's much in it to warrant an upgrade at this point for me. I got no issues really with the Polar OH1 Plus and attaching it via Bluetooth to both of my running watches. Why do I use two? Because I use one on miles and one on kilometers, that's why. 
As such, the Polar OH1 Plus comes with the beast seal of approval. Shoe-wise next, and at the moment my absolute favourites are just behind me, the Adidas Prime X Strung and the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus. I've got the old Air Max 3s up there as well, just because they're a beautiful thing. Both of these shoes have been working in the wetter, more demanding surfaces recently. Traction, once again, proving to be the main requirement I have during winter running. Primax Strung here is closing on 100 miles or 160 kilometers, so I will have my longer term review of that soon. I think you know what I'm gonna say already. The ASIC shoe is getting there. I've gotta be honest, these couldn't be any more different really. I've been using this one predominantly for speed training, some faster pace workouts, and the Primax Strung for more easy recovery or longer run stuff. The interesting stack and the super fitting upper of the Metaspeed Sky Plus, providing the better option for speed training. It's kind of odd as well, this shoe's taken a bit of a pounding recently, but give it a quick clean with the cloth and it looks fantastic once again. I was a little sad that the UK didn't see some of the superb discounts that some of you have had over in North America on the Primax Strung, though I am glad some of my North American buddies have managed to pick this one up for a steal. The perfect easy day shoe and one for steady pace and long runs. It's the king of cushion and it's the prince of propulsion. As Luke Skywalker and Han Solo found out in Empire Strikes Back, base layers are very important when you're out there doing winter running. In the UK, conditions vary from day to day, so you need something that's going to be reasonably versatile, that's going to keep the upper body ready for any sort of weather conditions. I've been using the Tracksmith Harrier long sleeve, it's where this one comes into play. You've got a breathable top that wicks away the hard-earned effort from your body, keeps you warm enough to survive those lower temperatures. It's another option that's really hard to beat, and if it's dry and it's ready on the hanger, I'd go for it. The merino wool seems to survive the constant run and wash cycle so much better than other tops that I've used this year. And though I haven't taken it up to a full week without washing it, as Tracksmith suggests, in fact, they even say you could do a whole month. I'm not quite that brave. I've washed it when it seemed practical and it didn't smell too bad. There's a good 89% of the merino wool in this one and it's warm enough to get down to around two or three C here in the UK. Put it this way, your hands are gonna feel the brunt of the cold before your upper body does if you're using this one from Tracksmith. That leads me nicely on to gloves. In the winter months here in the UK, I'm constantly on the lookout for something that repels the water, keeps my hands warm. I found nothing yet after years and years of trying. The very cheap Thinsulate gloves that we can get over here in the UK seem to do a reasonable job as long as it's not wet. They're kind of like a wool knitted sort of outside section of the glove. And then the center section is this sort of insulated white material. It works okay, but once it starts raining, your hands get saturated and they get cold very quickly. Any suggestions greatly received from viewers who are constantly running in these types of conditions? If you've got something good to suggest to me that keeps your hands dry and warm, even in wet conditions, I am all ears. So let me know down in the comments. For the lower body, I always opt for the same shorts. In fact, they're not shorts, they're tights. I go for the Nike Dry Fit Advanced AeroSwift tights. Their currently available model is a little different to mine. It features a pocket at the back in addition to two shallower inner pockets at the front, and then you get two slightly deeper pockets at the back, which are ideal to fit a science in sport gel. They just about fit, you know, those longer ones. I seem to have hundreds of those at the moment, so I tend to take one or two out with me on a long run, just in case I get peckish. I got three pairs of those tights, and they do work superbly well through the use and wash cycle. One of them, the swoosh, is kind of rubbed off a little bit, but who cares? They're hugging, they keep the lower body warm whilst providing a great fit. Do spend some time though, people, checking out the sizing of these. You will want exactly the right measurements. I think the newer ones come with like a draw cord, so it kind of eliminates that problem a little bit. It's certainly a streamlined design and one that Mrs. Edbud commented was just about appropriate in terms of the appearance and the coverage. So I'll let you read into that, whatever you want. On longer runs, I care for music. I like to be wired for sound. Well, wireless for sound, I suppose. Maybe Cliff Richard could do a new version of that track. I find the whole process that a little bit more enjoyable if I can give a little atmosphere to things, a little bit of background music, perhaps. And it helps me to block out some of the terrible traffic noise out there. I can't stand hearing people 
driving around and beeping their horns and stuff. It irritates me. Headphones of choice recently have been the Soundpeats Mini Pro wireless earbuds. These are reasonably inexpensive and you get some really great features for the cost. Around seven hours of battery life, noise reduction features are included into the Mini Pro. It also has a small size charging case which can top up the buds about three to four times. So you basically get about 20 hours of play. Easy touch features on both of the earbuds that only take a couple of runs to get used to. The earbuds do lack a little bit of bass if you're using them on the normal or the pass-through mode. But if you put them into noise cancelling, it really does bring up the bass a little bit more. Just a bit more of a rounded sound. Of course, I would advise against using the noise cancelling feature if you are running in an urban environment so you can hear your surroundings and remain safe. I do have a brand new pair of these earbuds to give away, courtesy of Soundpeats. If you wish to be in with a chance of winning these, you must email your answer to the question at the address that's on the screen right now. Question is, what was my official finishing time in the last half marathon that I raced in? Answers to this email, please, to be in with a chance. I'm going to close out the competition on Saturday, 3rd of December, 2022. That's at 12 a.m. UK. So those are my favourite running possessions right now. A video inspired, in fact, by one of my favourite jazz musicians. Inspired, of course, by the famous John Coltrane. Let me know your favourite running gear down in the comments. Either that or send a letter to Santa so he knows you don't want to miss out. Musical interlude time. Today it comes from three giants of rock. Lemmy, Dave Grohl and Billy Gibbons. Their superb version of Run Run Rudolph. Now it may be that you're thinking of putting your Christmas tree up sometime soon. You're going to need some suitable musical accompaniment. A little light wispy musical backing there to get you feeling seasonal. This probably isn't it. We got gritty rock and roll guitars from Gibbons, pummeling jackhammer like drums from Mr. Grohl, and a delivery drenched in Jack Daniels and gravel by Lemmy himself. It's a superb combination. This trio just seemed to gel together and make this wonderful version of the Chuck Berry seasonal track. Clearly, Lemmy had stayed off the fisherman's friend's lozenges to get his voice sounding just right for this one. Christmas magic here, covered by three legends. Run, run, Rudolph. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. We just hit 33,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Hit us up with a super thanks to help support the channel on a more ad hoc basis. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you. If anyone's wondering about the hat, it's a special custom job by Mrs. Ed Budd. If you want more information, send me an email.